Well, hello there. Sion Batson here from Sion Batson Tutoring. And in this video, I will teach you how to subtract a mixed number from a whole number. Very important concept for all of my fourth graders, my fifth graders, and even if you are getting ready to take the GED exam, this video is for you. So let's go. Now, this exercise is out of my fifth grade math workbooks. You can master fifth grade math, next generation learning standards, and you can master fifth grade math, common core edition. Now, both workbooks are filled with very simple and easy to follow notes, step-by-step -step examples, guided examples, and more than 1,800 practice problems and answers. Parents love these workbooks. Students love these workbooks. And the teachers love these workbooks because they are great resources for extra practice at home, for homework help, and they are the ultimate study guides to help your scholars get ready for the fifth grade state exam. So if you have a fifth grader, I would highly recommend that you get them a copy. You can get your copy from Amazon. Now, to our exercise. I am going to teach you three very simple steps that will help you master how to subtract or take a mixed number from a whole number. Step one, we will change the whole number to a mixed number. Step two, once we have our two mixed numbers, we will subtract their whole numbers. Then step three, we will subtract their numerators. Now, we do not subtract the denominators. The denominator will stay the same. Yes? Let's go. First example, we have 14 take 6 and 3 over 7. Step 1, we will change our whole number here, which is 14, to a mixed number. Yes? How do we do that? Very simple. We will first borrow 1 or take 1 from the 14. If we borrow 1 or take 1 from 14, 13 is left. Now we have to get the fractional part of the mixed number. Well, remember, we just borrowed one. That one will become the fractional part. But we need a numerator and a denominator. What will we use? This denominator here will help us. Since this denominator is 7, the whole or the fractional part will become 7 over 7. Make sense? Guess why? 7 over 7 is a whole, right? Remember whenever the numerator and the denominator in a fraction are the same, that fraction is a whole. So the one that we borrowed, the one that we borrowed from this 14 be becomes seven over seven. That one becomes the fractional part, yes? And the denominator, this denominator helps us determine what the fractional part should look like, yes? If this denominator was 5, the fractional part here would have been 5 over 5. If this denominator was 10, this fractional part would have been 10 over 10. Make sense? All right. Now, now that we have our mixed number, or now that we have, we've changed our whole number to a mixed number, let's put back the second mixed number. Yes? And now we subtract. We first subtract the whole numbers from the mixed numbers. We have 13 and 6. And 13 take 6 will give us 7. Yes? Then we subtract our numerators. We have 7 minus 3. And we get 4. And don't forget the denominators stay the same. We do not touch the, denom the denominators, right? Yes? How is that? So far, so good? All right. Let's try a next one. Let us try. It's a very simple concept. Yeah? Very simple concept. Step by step. That's the good thing about math. Step by step and you'll find. 
Let's see. Let's try seven, take two, and let's say mm, nine over 19. Yes? Now, step one is step one, we will change our whole number to a mixed number. Yes? So to change our whole number to a mixed number, we will first borrow one or take one from the mix from the whole number. If we borrow one, six is left. Because seven take one is six. Now that one that we borrowed, let's put the one that, that we borrowed right here. What do we do with this one that we just borrowed? Well, we need the fractional part of the mixed number now, yeah? So this one will become the fractional part. But this 19 will help us determine what the fractional part should look like. Since the denominator here is 19, the fractional part becomes 19 over 19. See why? 19 over 19 is a whole. Yes? Whenever the numerator and the denominator are the same, the fraction is a whole. So we always use this denominator to help us. Whatever this denominator is, this is what our fractional part will look like. This denominator will be both the numerator and the denominator of the fractional part. You get the idea? All right. Then we're going to put back, let's put back what we had left. Let's take away this one so you guys don't get confused. Two. Nine over 19, yes? Now we subtract. We do our whole numbers first. Six and two. Six take two will give us four, yeah? Then we do our numerators. Uh -huh. 19 take nine will give us 10, very good. And the denominator stays the same. We do not subtract the denominators. Get the idea? Is it clear? Very good. Now it's your turn to try one. I know you guys have been dying to try one because I know you want to prove to your mom or your dad, or to your grandma, or your grandpa, or your auntie, your uncle, your babysitter. You want to prove to them that you got this, right? So now it's your turn to shine. Let's do four take, uh, let's say two, and let's say hmm, uh, four, four over seven. Yes? Give this one a try. Pause, pause the video, give it a try, and then come back and see if we get the same answer. Remember to go step by step. You'll first change your whole to an, a mixed number. Then you will subtract the whole numbers from the mixed numbers. Then you'll subtract the numerators. You don't subtract the denominators. You're done. Give it a try. All right. Welcome back. Let's see if we get the same answer. So step one, we will change our whole number here to a mixed number. And to change the whole number to a mixed number, we will simply take one. If we take one from four, three is left. But that one that we borrow, we just can't put that one in our back pockets, right? We just can't put, um, put away. This one will help us get the fractional part of the mixed number, right? The one will become the fractional part. But what will be the fractional part? That is the question. This denominator here will help us. Since this denominator is 7, our fractional part becomes 7 over 7. Right? We choose 7 over 7 because we want the denominators to be the same. Yes? All right. Now that we have successfully changed our whole number to a mixed number, we shall continue. If you guys didn't get this part, try it again. Yes? If you got this part, job well done. We are proud of you here. Now we'll put back our second uh, mixed number, 2 and 4 over 7. And then we subtract. We first subtract the whole numbers. We have 3, we have 2. 3 minus 2 will give us 1. Yes? Then what do we have next? 7 and 4. 
7 take 4 will give us 3. 7 minus 4 gives us 3. And the denominator stays the same. We do not touch the denominator. Get the idea? Simple, fun. Do you want to try one more? All right, one more. I saw you guys shaking your head. I, 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 I see what's happening. I see you guys are having fun. I see you guys are having a good time here, right? Fun stuff, very, very fun stuff. Clear, right? Well, I'm glad that you guys are even taking time out to watch my video. I really appreciate that, yeah? I really, really do. Let's try, let's put a 14, let's put a 15 here. Let's put 11, mm, let's say 12 over, let's say 29. I'm glad that you guys are taking time to watch my video. Yes, glad you guys are enjoying it. Hope you guys are learning. So when, when you guys go, go back to class, you guys will be on top. When you guys take your exams, you will be on top. When you do your homework, you'll be able to knock it out. Now, pause the video, give it a shot, and then come back and let's see if we get the same answer. Yes, go on, you got this. All right, welcome back. Let's see. Step one, we will change our whole number to a mixed number. So to do that, a couple simple steps. We first borrow one or take one from the 15. If we take one from 15, 14 is left. But it's a, it's a mixed number, so we need a fractional part. Well, that one that we borrow, we're not gonna just put it in our back pockets. That one becomes the fractional part. But what exactly would be the fractional part? We'll use this denominator here to help us. Since this denominator is 29, fractional part becomes 29 over 29. And this is a whole. Because 29 over 29, whenever the numerator and the denominator of a fraction are the same, that fraction is a whole number. So that one that we borrow, that's the 29 over 29. Make sense? Get the idea? Very good. Now, I know we all got this part by now. We have mastered this concept and we all got this part. So, very good. You guys got this. I, I told you, I believe in you guys here. We put back our second uh, mixed number. And now we subtract. Yes, so we first do our whole numbers. Boom, 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 boom. 14, take 11, will give us what? Three, very good, thank you for the help there. Three, yes. We know that, then we subtract our numerators, 29 and 12. And what is 29, take 12? 29, take 12 will give me what? 17, yeah? Yes? And then the denominator stays the same. 29. Yes? How was that? Good? Clear? Fun? Exciting? Straightforward? Yes. The beauty about math is just the steps. You have steps. All you have to do is follow this, the steps. Don't jump the steps. Don't skip the steps. Don't ignore the steps. We go step by step. I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. I really hope that you guys will find it helpful and useful. Yes? Again, this exercise is out of my math workbooks. You can master fifth grade math, next generation learning standards, and you can master fifth grade math, common core edition, tons of practice. Yes? Until next time, Remember to enjoy your math homework and to practice. See you.